Friday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday evening, winter and summer, they come in ones and twos, then in droves, some from near at hand, for others a pilgrimage of incredible miles, crossing the water to the island, paying a toll of fourpence to the keeper of the bridge. Along the track, through the trees. A rubber stamp for a ticket in the anteroom of paradise. Or is it hell? Depends who you are, how you look at things. This is Eel Pie Island in the Thames off the coast of Twickenham. It's a jazz club that meets in a hall attached to a pub. Tonight the band is that of Brian Green. Over the ten years of its life, the club has been the subject of attack by a number of local residents. They complain that Eel Pie attracts undesirables, is a potent source of hooliganism, that the young are led into moral danger, encouraged by the open sale of alcohol. That there is some truth in this, no one doubts. But is it the whole truth? Certain it is that there exists at the club a curious underground movement, a hidden grapevine that becomes available only when it is searched for. The church, as represented by a sympathetic visitor, the vicar of Richmond, offers help openly. He is not here in plain clothes but some islanders have found other ways. Take a face in the crowd. Dave Morgan, left school at 16, drifted through a variety of jobs, dishwasher, salesman, boat builder. What could one have possibly predicted for him? That he should now, a university graduate, be teaching what are known as liberal studies at a technical college? Apart from teaching, Dave runs the record club and has just started a poetry club. Oh, by the way, there's a poetry reading in room nine at about ten to one this afternoon, if anybody's interested. All right? Fine. And at the first meeting, a poem that is not irrelevant by student Gerald Newington. I am me. There is no one like me, nor is there ever likely to be. I am an individual, a human being. I was born and I will die. I live hard, play hard, and may die in the same way. I live in a world full of fear, all have fear, the unholy torture of life. When one is young, fear is young. Your world is what you see and no more. But as you mature, the world will open out and also close in and press on your mind until finally freedom comes with age. You look inwardly to see what you have been, what torture you have seen and been through. All life passes us and experience grows. You look back, you look back from the good times and the hard. You may laugh at yourself or feel sad. The time of a friendly fight over a pint as you sit and discuss the pros and cons of a rugby match you have lost. <laughs> You could come to Eel Pie Island three nights a week for years and never know there was anything there but the booze, the jazz, the crowd. Unless an overwhelming discontent with your life started you looking around, searching, asking questions. Another who desperately needed a change of direction and found the starting point at Eel Pie, Jack Lambert. Jack is now a leader at an adventure playground in northwest London under the auspices of the Camden Council of Social Service. Many of the kids are having a bad start in life. Poverty, overcrowding, broken homes, a mother out at work all day. And in their service, Lambert has found his life's work. Not an easy job. The margin between a deprived child and a depraved child is frighteningly narrow. And Lambert has occasionally to exercise a firm authority a thing he hates, for he believes that normal children develop fully only in a climate of total freedom, when they soon make of themselves a productive, responsible community. It can work, 
This timber top cafe was entirely conceived, designed, planned and built by the children themselves. Morgan and Lambert are not the only ones. At least two dozen youngsters have found a new direction in life through Eel Pie Island. The moving spirit is Arthur Chisnell, who runs the club, a sociologist with no formal training who has excited interest the world over by his methods. Youngsters who seek him out, and he will never seek them out, get invited to his home to talk over their problems and their hopes. But talk is not enough. Chisnell's purpose is to create a practical path that a youngster can follow if he has the determination. Once started on it, Chisnell will be there only as a friend in need. Often the path begins with Mrs. Marjorie Leslie, principal of the Richmond Institute of Adult Education. Evening classes can be essential for someone who only began to want to learn, perhaps years after leaving school. Then, frequently, a huge step in distance alone. Harlech in the Snowdonia National Park in Wales. And below it is Harlech College, or as the Welsh have it, Colleg Harlech. Back to where we were last time. It's the College of the Second Chance. No entrance exams. The one applicant in three who gets a place is judged on potential rather than past performance. Minimum age 20. Philip Lenton left school at 16, drifted through 15 jobs, mostly labouring, now studying economics and political history here via Eel Pie Island. Secured, There's no upper age limit. 50% will go on to university, teacher training, or to acquire social science diplomas. Alan Wetherill, ran away from home at 15, lived in a cave in Hastings Cliffs, now studying political history and psychology, like Rosalind Westwood, who's 26. Both found their way here from Eel Pie Island. Alan aims to be a child psychologist, Rosalind a journalist, specialising in social studies a plaque which sums up the philosophy of the college. A third of the college costs is borne by the government, the rest comes in donations, in fees paid by students or those local authorities who give grants. Because they have chosen to work, they work hard, but there must always be time off. Laborers, clerks, any job you can name. The vast majority fail their 11 plus, yet half go on to university. Seven scholarships to Cambridge alone have been won in the last eight years. Rosalind, on the threshold of her career, looks back to Eel Pie Island with gratitude. She sums it up as a therapeutic unit where everyone helps everyone else. It's more complicated than that. The West Berliners studied the island for years before setting up a similar system. Arthur Chisnell has made a science of reaching people by a self-generated grapevine. The boys and girls both operate and use the system. They are the system. They come in their thousands, many as rough and as tough as you make them. But of those thousands, a few will seek and find virtually new lives.